Hey, 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 it's your girl, Ashley, a.k.a. The Widow, and with me today is SSJK.Sanctum, and what are we talking about, K.Dot? We're talking about Midnight, Episode 6. Yes, mid, uh, Moon Knight stars Oscar Isaac as Mark Spector, and also stars Ethan Hawke as Arthur Harrow, and in this episode, uh, everything, you know, comes to a, a nice little conclusion, I guess, for the season. We don't know. Originally, uh, we... You know, it was a limited series, and then on Twitter, they change it to season finale. So we might get an additional season. And if you haven't had a chance to check out Moon Knight, you can check it out now on Disney+. Plus. All the episodes are now streaming on Disney+. Plus. So, but yeah. first, before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if go ahead and, you know, subscribe to this crazy, you know, guy that runs the, the Mad DC here corner over there. SSJK.Sanctum. His link will be in the description box down below. So, Dot, let's get right into it. Uh, tell me um, kind of like your initial thoughts and kind of like get us into what happens in the opening of the episode. What are your likes? You know, is there anything that really stands out from you in the beginning? Here? Um, in the beginning, I mean, I liked from what from the beginning. What I liked about the beginning was Mark's like resurrection in a sense, coming out the water and stuff, the way that was shot and filmed. I like that. Um, I was not a huge fan of the process of how they have returned. And just to give people context of how they basically return. Yes. Uh, Mark is in the reed of field of reeds. That's basically mm -hmm. heaven in Egyptian mythology or their religion. It's whatever, whatever you guys want to call it. Mark realizes he wants Stephen. He needs Stephen. He can't. Stephen is a part of his is a part of him that he needs is a void that needs to be filled. So he went. He somehow he left the field of reeds, heaven, I guess, to run back into the duat, which is, I guess, purgatory. It's like that middle ground. I don't. It's, I is a duat hell or is it purgatory? Is it like the mid middle? That middle? that is like they turned to stone. So and from my under my that's like purgatory. Oh, because that's their their souls are damned there. Because then they don't get to continue onto the field of reeds. Remember? Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. I guess say technically duat is kind of like hell then. So Stephen is in the duat. Stephen died last episode. Mark somehow runs back into the duat. You know, and he is running and looking for steven and uh you know he talks to steven helps steven break out of the stone somehow that's supposed to keep you there forever and he just breaks out with the power of words and all that and they're out even though in the duat as soon as you touch it you you freeze you're gone and mark was running through it and stuff i would say it was to me that was a more of a directing issue like it could be right but a directing issue because you had this huge gap of time where Mark is doing this activity, going through this sand where he's supposed to freeze and die and be stuck. I, I do have, like, I just had a thought, and this is just, like, inferring devil's advocate, possibly. Not saying that this is the reasoning. What if where he was already accepted into the field of reeds, he was able to get farther? But he does kind of start turning, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he starts turning the stuff. No, that, I mean, that no. could be a case. No, it doesn't. Uh, and then then that, I forgot about that. Like, I forgot that part yeah. skipped my mind for a minute. So, yeah, that that is a continuity. That's like an issue because how could you run all the way through it? And when we see Steven, he changes pretty quickly. It was, it was pretty fast. And it was almost instant. And then you get the mark. Um, mark and get Steven. And then the souls is coming is coming to the duot or the afterlife and uh taro wet you know does her fast and furious drifting and she tries to block these the it was some sand that was coming something was coming that was going to stop keep steven and mark from getting through osiris's gate to get back to the um land of the living so she did her fast and furious drifting covered the entrance so they can get through boom they're back they're alive and they're well um in this moment Kanchu and layla is dealing with Ahmed and his uh, Tomb Raiders. Now, pretty cool fight between Kanchu and Ahmed. Kanchu can't fight. Ahmed was uh was throwing them hands with that that little nice wig she had on. Remember that that wig? She was looking good too. You know, little little beautiful alligator, Egyptian 
god and stuff she looking good you know um it was looking good yeah she had that wig on she looking she looking good you like her wig she was looking fly the big she, evil alligator yeah she was looking fly okay she She's was looking, looking fly, fly with her wig on. So, you know, her and uh, her and uh Kanchu got into a fight. Now, we come to realize that the gods we thought were in on it were not in on it. On it's so stupid. <laughs> I was like, all right, they all finna work together, you know, like release Amit together, the guy who was in the suit. So this whole time. They never, ever, ever, and, and, ever. And, and, and when Arthur like comes, and when Arthur comes storming in, and he like before he comes through, he goes, "Harrow, like why did you not listen to Mark?" It's like it doesn't make any sense. Like you didn't. It was just like they just bought it hook, lock, and sinker. And when he came in, they knew it was him. Like they, it's like how do you not? You're a god, first of all, so I don't understand that. Like I, I don't, I don't get how you're not like. You know, kind of like picking up on aware. that, and not even like taking the initiative to go check out what Mark said in the desert. Because if you would have, you would have actively seen what they were doing. And uh, Layla, so Layla, well, before, so back a little bit. The way Layla got Conchu out is that she just took the statue and broke it. <laughs> <laughs> just threw it on the ground, broke it, and Kanchu came out. I, I, I guess it was that easy. But, yeah. She just broke it. Um, during this moment, Kanchu was trying to ask Layla if like, she wants to be an avatar, and she's like, no, 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 I don't want to do it. I see what you did to Mark, blah, 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 blah. And then, uh, later, Tara Wet hits her up like, yo, 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 you want to be an avatar? I'll be one temporarily. I'm like... She does say no at first. Yeah, she does say no. But then I'm and like... Then but then after the gods are dead, she realizes that she has to step up because, like, in order to Okay, so that's the part vomit, I missed. So they died. Yeah. The yeah, they died. died. They're, they're um, all the ones that were yeah, in the Arthur Her uh, Amit and Arthur Her and Arthur Her like kills them. So just, like just at the once the, just the ones that was all alive, of right? them, you know, all of them. They're like the, the council the of gods that too. were, you know, all the I don't think this the ones that are maybe encased in Sashi, but the okay. ones who were like the the judging panel of gods, um, they were all killed. And then he remember he goes to the hallway and he explains to Layla what needs to be done in order to you know get Amit uh, encased back into Ashanti, right? And so she then uh, then lets Tarut then take over her because then she knows that she's going to need the assistance of that right. now. Uh, then we get to Tarwet giving uh, Layla a, bit, a temporary abilities, temporary um, avatar abilities. You know, she turns into a giant bird, even though the god that she's got her powers from is a hippo, but whatever. But it's cool. Her powers are kind of cool, though. The wings is okay, you know. Not better than the golden eagle armor. But, you know, that's that's another thing. That's another thing. Usage the usage of it is better. It doesn't look as cool, but the usage uh, of it is better. It was okay. It is. It was okay. Like I would say, it was okay. It wasn't. It was definitely was no way better than Moon Knight's suit or anything Moon Knight had. She just had wings. Moon Knight was still cooler. Yeah, Moon Knight was doing everything she can do. Uh, shield cape flying. Yeah, but I'm saying that the usage oh, of what is. I'm saying compared to Wonder Woman in the golden armor, the usage of it. I'm saying the way that they used it, you know, in in the course of the show was better than what they did in Wonder Woman 1984. Her suit, of course, looked phenomenal. Like she looked amazing, and when she dropped the wings, it was like one of the coolest looking things I remember in the trailer. I was so hyped. Because I thought that was a cool moment, but the they didn't. I mean, it was just like a wasted nothing burger in Wonder Woman 1984. At least in this, it, there was a purpose, and a, and it really like helped. You know, in those big fight sequences, like uh, like when Wonder Woman uses it, I will it, say this. I'll it's say not this. as it's not as effective. I'll say this in Wonder Woman 84 for the eagle armor. I would say it had a bigger uh, purpose in the story. Than what they did with Layla, because look, I don't, I don't dislike Layla's armor, and I don't really dislike Layla. What I didn't like was how much Layla was included in this finale. Like, I like Layla, 
but this should have been all Moon Knight this finale. It should have been all Moon Knight by himself, him and Steven fighting the bad dudes. They but he was, but he was, but like why? But he was also dying, and so she had to come come in and kind of like help until he got there too. Well, yeah, that's why I wanted them to figure it out. Like I wanted it to be Mark and Steven figure it out, not Layla got. And I'm not saying it's because you know, Whammy. Yeah, I'm not saying it's because of that. I'm just saying it's like Layla been making it pretty clear, and you know, Steven and them was all making it pretty clear. Like they don't want Layla to get be a part of this Avatar stuff. Not get her in it, and she just does. I understand it's temporary, but hey, who knows how long this will be temporary? Like, cause she can. If they already set it up, who's to say she won't come back as a Scarlet Scarab again? I think she's gonna. I think she will. Like, I feel and, like, and that's the thing. It's I like think they'll be like be this temporary. team. I feel like they'll be like this team eventually, yeah. like the two of them together. Which I think that, like, I, and like you know, I, I did not like Layla in episode two, and I didn't like, and I didn't care for her in episode four. Yeah, you know, but I'm, you know, but as and I'm sorry, two and three. I'm excuse me, I misspoke. I did like her in four, and I did like her in six. Um, and you know, she wasn't in five, you know, really. So, but so I think that the two, and I think that they have a good chemistry, so I could see them like being this good team. I think that they could be a, a more effective team than Ant Man Wasp. Right, Steven got great chemistry, too. yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I'm talking about Oscar Isaacs, and I'm sorry, I don't know the actors. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, you're the talking, two of them yeah, have very yeah, good uh, chemistry, yeah. So, and I think that the, the two of them being a better team will, is, is a better, you know, is a you know. A relationship team to me is better than Ant Man and Lost because I only like half of that team over there. So I feel like that they um, are a stronger duo. Yeah, and I'm in the comparison to Ant Man and Lost, even though I feel like that they a bit suffered more, from uh, this story here. What yeah, Layla's going? a little bit more likable than uh, Hope, even though she's cooler than Scott. Who was doing the coolest stuff in Scott, she's a little bit more likable as a character. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Hope is kind of like a school mom. She she moms everybody, you know. Super serious, all you know, super mm -hmm. strict and stuff. Yeah, she, you know, Hayden. She falls stuff. into that angry woman trope, unfortunately, how they wrote her. But anyway, get back to me. Let's get back to midnight now. So, as I said, Layla, what was presented looked cool, but it was not needed because I wanted Mark and Stephen to figure it out. Yes, they do figure it out. Um, so while they're fighting Arthur, pretty some pretty cool action in this sequence, especially from Steven. And, you know, a lot of people gave their explanation of how Steven randomly developed some fighting skills out of nowhere. And I guess muscle memory, but last episode, he didn't have that muscle memory when he was trying to help. He's Mark taking from fight. Mark. He, I guess he's like, they're kind of like, I wonder if they're in this again. This is just me like speculating, inferring. We don't really know. Um. What if they're where they were able to like come to peace together and coexist? That maybe they're able to pull from one another, which makes them well, because that's, that's what I say. I think in episode like episode five, when Stephen finally worked up the courage to remember when Marcus being pulled away, he finally worked up the courage to like fight. He grabbed that bat or whatever, hit the sand person. Now, I'm not saying Stephen, you know, I, I think Stephen has his courage has gone up, like his courage, his bravery and all that, his confidence. But, you know, it's just him randomly learning how to fight, which is weird because he wasn't doing it last episode when he worked up the courage. Yeah. To but, yeah, but he did look cool. He looked you cool. Know, like I said, don't get, I can separate looking cool and like the story aspect of it. Like the fight scene looked cool. It did. He was going there. That shit was tight. He was doing his thing. But it was a pretty cool looking fight. Now, you get to the rest of the episode. Conchu's still getting beat up by Amit. Conchu's trash. He can't fight. He, you know, he need he needed he need he needs a class. He needs to go to the Mike Tyson school of knowing how to throw them hands. He ain't, he can't fight. He's getting his ass whoop. Amit kicking his ass. Uh, then Mark gets pinned by Arthur. Arthur pins him down. He's using the staff. Layla is pinned on the car, and she's you know she she's stuck. Got three dudes trying to shoot at her. I don't know why they shoot at her face, but whatever. They're trying to kill her. And then we get a... Oh. And, up. and we don't, and don't forget it in, in the background, like <laughs> Amit. Is that... That's before Amit in... No, nah, it's during Arthur. it. They're, they're all still fighting. Well... But I'm I, saying I, it's before I, the Amit pyramid the fight with Arthur, right? That's what I'm saying. 
yeah, yeah. Ahmed gets the upper hand over Am um, over Kanchu. He, she's dragging him. And then Arthur gets the upper hand on Mark. So they can like mirror each other, you know, Kanchu. Yeah, it's like it, they're what they're doing what the kaiju fight was basically the mirroring the fight between avatars. Yes. And you know, we get to see Jake do nothing. Now look. I understand they want to keep up the mystery and hide Jake. I understand it. But you've been doing it for, you've been dragging this mystery for over and over and over again. And this is why I wish they never showed Jake's coffin in episode five. I wish they never showed it. I wish they didn't. Because I go back to it. Mark and Steven's trying to figure out what they need to move on. They see a coffin. Mark saw Steven in the coffin. Pulled him out. Because why is this person in his coffin in my head? yelling and then they they never go back to that coffin ever and you would think like they're trying to figure out what do they need to move on but they know there's a third personality because they know uh they had that you know incident earlier in the season yeah. where it was it was neither one of them and then you have a moment just like that and that like where jake like like kills all those people right and you and I'll get to my when we get to farther down in Jake, uh, how I feel about that. It was just, I, I, it was just, and okay. like, I was still, I wasn't okay with them flashing away from showing how Mark, our hero, and Steven get the upper hand on the villain. Like, that's totally different. That's just like directing. And if we're talking like just the aspect of filmmaking or making a show in general, like, you don't, you can't really do that type of stuff. Like, just cut away from how the hero our hero and our story gets the upper hand on the villain and stuff because it's like kind of cheap. But the, in a way they do it, they kind of have an excuse because it goes with the rhythm of what they're doing. But then it's like, it's still kind of cheap. But even then, even then, like after it happens, they go like, oh my gosh, Mark, Steve, Mark, what's that? Like, yeah, well, maybe if you guys went and opened up the coffin that was there in like yeah, you know, and this was I wish they never showed that Jake's coffin, because what we come to find out is later, Jake and Conchu have been scheming this whole time. Well, I think Conchu had this plan that he wanted to have Jake, and that he was using Layla as basically an excuse to you know as a front to Mark, like saying that he would he wants to take Layla when that wasn't his goal all along. His goal was to get yeah. Jake right. And when we think about Jake, uh, it, we did get those moments, you know, in the hospital where we hear a different, you know, cadence in the voice, a different, uh, a different accent, all of that. Nice. And uh, and so it, it it's not it's not Mark. It was like a New Yorker accident when they're in the hospital, you know, when he's got the broken nose. He doesn't he, he, the way he sounds there. No, he's speaking. No, that's at the end. He was speaking English. Why do you speak Spanish, Arthur? I, I I I think that maybe he might just be he that might be I mean he might be his probably some years ago he likes to hop between languages every once. In a I while. don't know, but may, uh, then who is that then? In the had this weird different accent outside of oh no, that's Mark him in the hospital. But then he speaks that's Spanish him. at the end. Yeah, I was gonna say it was Jake. Yeah, I was just gonna say I, I know, but I was just curious. I was just asking you if it's not Jake, who else would it be in your opinion? Um, so in the oh, hospital, so we... uh, the scene kind of is not the exact scene, but it kind of memory re reminded me of the Fast Six opening. Remember mm -hmm. when Jason stayed and broke into the hospital, went to go see his brother, killed all those yeah. people. And you walk out, you all see dead bodies and stuff hanging up on the ceiling and all this stuff. It wasn't as gruesome as that, but it kind of reminded me of something like that. He just murdering the doctors and stuff on the way in so he can get Arthur. Yeah. Now. It Arthur looked at Jake like he knew what was up. Like, oh, you're getting yeah. up. Like he, yeah. Well, he didn't. I don't like, think he he didn't it. realize it at first until I think he. It, it took him a minute. But what I wanted to say about Jake is that I feel like yes, I think that the cool it was a cool scene. The reveal was cool, but I think like waiting to the last minute to show us that. In the context of what a, this was going to be a limited series, um, which originally, and, and even though now they maybe they're green lighting a second season, this show was written, mind you all, 
to be a limited series run and you don't give us a cohesive story from beginning to end right and I, 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 you know it's this pattern where it's like we're gonna lay groundwork we're laying it 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 but it doesn't feel like a a full story you know completely to me and yeah, there's things like that you could have showed me um earlier on um that i feel like would have gave more context to jake even though it was a really cool scene you know i think that you could have saved the part of Konshu really wanting to use jake until the end and maybe we just you know we we never see really that rage maybe out loud in in our face until the end but like just confirmation that that guy that's sitting in that hospital chair is not mark and it's not steven and maybe mark and steven aren't aware of that but us as an audience we are you know if something just so it feels like um it's not just about gotcha surprise gotcha surprise you know you know it seems that's why i season. think maybe in episode five a nice dynamic would have been like i feel like jake should have been like revealed like way ahead of time anyways especially at least four in that at least the six episodes going into the last three episodes yeah if if they have his coffin there they open it and jake kind of and this what and this is the thing right and that's why i say even in the context of episode five even what i want really couldn't work because i'm like okay they're in the afterlife conchu there's no way conchu can do anything to surpass whatever the afterlife is like would you, you the feather weighs your weighs your scales mm -hmm. and i was thinking like yo what if jay came out here to try and like set up mark and steven and keep them from well i not to keep them but like he's the one that gets out to control them kind yeah of. like he gets some control like he's playing mind games and manipulating them so he can ensure that he gets the body by the end of it and he can do this stuff for conchu but then I'm like, Conchu's in a statue and he can't really do nothing in the afterlife. It's just weird that they didn't notice Jake, like Tarwit. It's yeah. weird that Jake somehow... I think it's because they're not aware of Jake. Are you talking about with the balancing of the scales? Well, like or, all of it. Like all of it, because the, the balancing of the scales and then feel the reason, like everything is in a sense... Like it's the afterlife, you know, everything, you know, it's kind of supposed to get revealed to you, like your life, yeah. all that, like everything. Yeah, th yeah, that, I mean, like, obviously the gods should be aware of Jake, but. Right, you know, it's just. So it does seem like a, a plot hole, you know, in, in, in five and things that don't make sense, inconsistency. Like if they you know? didn't die and they were still in the present and none of this happened, they didn't have to weigh their scales or nothing, then a little bit different, but it's just like. I don't know. It's kind of weird that Steve. It's just weird. That's why I say they should have never showed that coffin, because when you show the coffin, even Stephen should have been curious about what's in it. Because Stephen seemed more adventurous about trying to really figure out how they can get out of here. How do these they balance the scales? Mark was hiding stuff, but Stephen was exploring stuff. You would think Steven would walk over and open it. At least Steven. You know. <sighs> Moon Knight, Moon Knight. Silliness, silliness, silliness. But we get this cool, we do get that cool reveal. But then we also have that weird, silly flash where we see none of this epic fight, which I did not like. Okay, that's another thing I did not like about that. If anybody else, and I'm not trying to make it a, you know, a comic book comedy versus comic i'm talking in general in general with any content could be breaking bad walking dead anything if any other like program did that like cut away from the failure people would have been a drag in that shit you know it's like yeah but they use the flashes as an excuse yeah and i and i, and I know of y'all probably might and i keep saying this right man i'm gonna say it again I, I call, I felt like I felt it. Like, I was like, okay, it's cool at first in that, in that first episode. I was totally fine at first episode. Yeah, but, but my concern was we was going to get some bullshit like this. And yeah, and you can still, like, explain it away as if it is Jake. All right? But there is no way that that fight, you, that, you, you have to show us that. 
you have to show us that. That was a big misstep. I do. I did not like that either. Um, it, it just, and then I really didn't like Amit. I mean, like I thought that they kind of looked cool in the background. I enjoyed the episode. Um, and Amit, if, was if awesome you take it outside of, if you take it away from it being a conclusion to a season, it's not a bad episode. But yeah. as a season finale. Um, I don't feel like it wraps up and ties up those bows. And the reason why I say I like the episode and it's as good as a standalone episode when I'm explaining that to you is because Oscar Isaac, his performance is, is, is top tier. Okay? This, I mean, he carries the show on his back because the script brings it down and, and everything that's happening just brings the show down so much and he does his very best to elevate everything around him. I totally agree. Um, Oscar Isaacs. That's why episode five was my favorite because it was pure acting. I think episode five was really the only episode I did like from this show. But episode five is my favorite episode. Was Oscar yeah, episode Isaacs. five was my favorite. Every, yeah, he carried it. Yeah, that was amazing. And then we're in here. Here we are in six, and we get some good moments. He has some really good moments. And then Ethan Hawke, his portrayal is, I like him, but I still feel like he's just evil for evil. I don't feel like his motives are really explained to us where, to a place where we're, we, it's believable and we can get, I can get on board with it. It was just like, oh, you know, I used to be Conshu's avatar um, and now um, I judge people before they do crimes. But yet you felt like you were a slave to Khonshu and you were trying to repent, but yet you basically go and do the same thing, but you do it before they commit the crimes. Khonshu waited till after. So I, I just like, where... His, his, his what got you to that, to that extreme? Really, yeah. How did we get that extreme? His motivations wasn't that It wasn't deep. clear. Not saying they're clear. not, like the plot itself, like the plan he's doing is like not a bad he, villain plan. But it's like they didn't. Explain, you know, they didn't do a good job. He, he's really just hurt that Conchu was using him, and it's like, okay, I thought there was so a little Amit. bit more to it. <laughs> like maybe something rooted in his childhood or the way he was growing up. Well, I mean, he felt guilty for more. killing in the name of Conchu, and he was like his. Re that's why he wore the glass in his shoes, and he was repenting. But you were essentially just you went from doing that to an extremist version of it essentially in my mind you know is what you did because you created a cult based off of this and we're judging people before they could harm anyone or and we don't even know what crimes they could have been judged for that could have been so minimal that they really don't amount to anything and people were dying you know so it was it was you know like this extreme um so uh i'm trying to think what did you think about uh, so we see him go to the hospital, right? Um, Arthur, correct? And um, he, when he knocks over the cup, when you look in the cup, it looks like sand to him. And then it, obviously it's coffee, it spills. And who comes to Willie Mount? Jake. And we don't see it, but you, you can tell he's got a leather jacket on. And then we get to the point where it zooms up and we see the iconic Jake Lockley's um, hat. They get out to the car and it's uh, Mr. Knight's limo um, from the comics. Um, and uh, I mean, like, like it looked really cool. Like Jake Lockley looked like Jake Lockley. They had the limo. So all, so all of that stuff is a plus. Um, they get in the car and what happens, Dot? And shout out, and then what I thought it was so funny, Ray said, Yeah, he kicked that wheel, he kicked that wheelchair for nothing. <laughs> trying to, trying yeah. to look, uh, cool, H like angry, yeah. Zach he Snyder, he could have went, he could have just did that. That was Dave, that was David Ayer and Zach Snyder's Moon Knight, or Jake Lockley. Um, and then he they basically assassinate, um, Arthur, and then they drive off into the sunset. Yes. And also a good thing, and not a good thing, but a thing to know is that when Jake looks up at the mirror in the car, what reflection is staring back at him? 
Oh, I forgot. Oh, it was, was uh, Stephen and Mark. Stephen and Mark are not there. It's Jake. Jake's staring back at Jake. In that or, maybe, or maybe their bodies are separated. I think that they are so suppressed at this moment. At this time, Jake is, you know, um, kind of, they're kind of like dormant right now. They're in the sunken place, I believe. Because um, we see them wake up in the bed and they're chained to chained to the bed. So I wonder if this is some symbolic thing with them, you know. Um, I don't know how going because I'm because even cause you would think they would know if they I think they're going to figure it out. Like, yo, like who's been taking the body from both of us? Like where you've been going? Into, I mean, because it seems like that they know that there's a third person there. So yeah. It's like, so it's like really no it's just, ma it's just so a matter of getting into their own head and figuring out like figuring how to escape it, how the two of them can work together to escape to take yeah. over Jake. And then like, you know, that that's what they have to learn. And that Khonshu, he was his own villain, you know, here. Because um, someone pointed, you know, because someone did point it out, you know, he said, I'll let you two go, which was, you know, so it was like a little cheeky, his way around keeping them yeah. uh, dormant and, and Jake being the lead, but them really not essentially being free. They just um, were think. suppressed. They're, they're just suppressed at this point. So do you have, uh, what would you uh, give this episode as a grade? As an episode, I can give it a six out of ten. Six point five out of ten. I give it a six point five 